entrepreneurs do we have in the room? Let me see a show of hands, or, or future entrepreneurs. Let me see, okay. About, all over, about two thirds of the room. That's fantastic because that's exactly the kind of crowd I like to talk to, those that wanna be entrepreneurs. Now, do any of you wanna maybe go on Shark Tank and get Mr. Wonderful to get nasty? No? <laughs> How many have seen Shark Tank, right? Mr. Wonderful, do you know why he calls himself that? Because nobody else will, okay? <laughs> Now, he kisses the mirror every morning, he loves himself, right? No, no, he's actually, he's a great guy, he's a good friend of mine, and we've had a lot of time, great times together. Here we are at the, um, the guitar convention, and it's actually the National Associations of Music Manufacturers, and we did a folding guitar together on Shark Tank, so that's one of the projects that we did. And I'm gonna tell a little bit about Shark Tank today, how I got on. I'll tell you a little bit about how I got started as an entrepreneur, and then I'm gonna share with you four steps and some, actually, some tough times that I had, because as an entrepreneur, it's only fair for me to tell you also some of the problems, some of the challenges. When they asked me to come, I asked, is it okay that I talk about how I had sort of a meltdown at one point in my, in my career? And I wanna talk about that, how I hit really a bottom point in my life and decided I had to do something to turn that around. So um, if that's okay, I'm gonna share that with you here today also. So it uh, just starts real quick, way back when I was young and my, my father it was my first mentor. And here's, this is my presentation today as in tribute. This is the third anniversary. He died three years ago, the week of June 23rd, which is next week. So um, let's give my father a round of applause for being a great service to this country. He, he flew 150 missions in World War II, which was pretty amazing. Got shot down a couple times and, you know, he fought for our freedom, and, and this is a great place to be, talking about freedom and economic education. So for me, I got educated by my father about economics way back. And one of the first things, this is kind of a joke slide, but I say, I remember when at Christmas time, other kids would get regular gifts, I would get the books like, How the Grinch Stole Your Product Idea, okay? And the Cat in the Hat, creating another line of hats, okay? So that my dad was always teaching me. And so I was very lucky to have a father that would show me. I worked in his restaurants. In fact, um, here I was in his Harrington's Irish pub way back. And then he says, you gotta be an entrepreneur. And I started a driveway ceiling business. And then I had a heating and air conditioning company. And I went on then to create a business brokerage company. It was called the Small Business Center, a one-stop center for small businesses. I rented a whole floor of an office building in Cincinnati, Ohio, where I'm from. And, it, and we, had, we had the business brokerage company. So we sold you the business, but then you needed a legal structure. So we had a lawyer, we had an insurance agent, we had an advertising agency, and everything you needed on that floor to help you survive and thrive as a business owner. So this was sort of like you see these WeWork spaces today, but it was all the camaraderie, all of us working together and uh, accounting and graphics. And you know, we did everything, your books, your records, your uh, brochures, your ads, uh, menus if you were in a restaurant business. So this got me really in tune to seeing lots of different businesses because as a business broker, I had a couple hundred different businesses for sale. Laundromats, floral shops, pizza parlors, delicatessens, and I got the books and records of all these different companies. So, because we had to sell them, we had to have all access to all their information. So it was, I call it a curiosity overload phase for me and a chance for me to really understand the inner workings of many businesses. And so I used to go to a lot of trade shows and, um, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about TV because you know, TV back in the 80s and 90s and then when cable hit was different back in the old days when there's only five channels. When cable hit, you had HBO, movies and CNN sports. But when I got to the Discovery Channel, I ordered the, the big cable package, 1984, that was what was on the Discovery Channel. Now this is how I got into the infomercial industry because this story is pretty cool. And I, I say that there were Three eureka moments in my life, and I'm gonna share each one of those with you today. And the first one is coming up here in just a second because I, I said to myself, how, I, I called the cable company, what's wrong with Discovery Channel? 
why are there bars on the screen? And they said, oh, it's only an 18 hour a day network. Six hours a day, that's what you're gonna see. And that's when the light bulb went off in my mind. Think about this, what, you know, what can I put on that channel and make some money for me and discovery, right? Six hours a day. So, so here I am going to all these different you know, businesses to sell. I'm going to, if I'm gonna sell a flower shop, I go to the flower shows and I go to the restaurant shows. And here I am at the home and garden show in Philadelphia. And there's a, a crowd around this one booth and there's a man standing. I barely had to jump up and look over the shoulders and he's got a knife in his hand. He's cutting through a Coca-Cola can, through a hammer head, through a muffler, through a pair of sneakers with this knife. And I said, what is that guy doing, okay? I mean, think about that. He said, you can get the Ginsu for $14.95, but for the first 10 people, I'm gonna give you a second one absolutely free, but wait, there's more, right? You've heard that, right? 10 free steak knives, okay? So he got attacked by me. I, got, I was one of those 10 people, and we all bought that Ginsu knife set, right? And so that's when the light bulb went off. This is Eureka moment number one. I said to Arnold, his name was Arnold Morris. I'm gonna show you what I did with Arnold because I, when Arnold got on break, I said, Arnold, that is the greatest pitch I've ever seen. And everybody attacked you when you were done. And I watched him do it a few more times, the same set of words. And I said, I've got a great idea. I said, first of all, how long have you been doing this? He said, Kevin, I go, I'm here at the Philadelphia Home Show. Next week, I'm in the Iowa State Fair. Then I'm off to San Francisco. 40 weeks a year, I sell the Ginsu knife. And I said, Arnold, I've got a great idea. You know, I don't know if you've been watching TV, but you know that Discovery Channel? It's got six hours a day of bars on the screen. What if we filmed your presentation, put it up on Discovery Channel, give them a little cut of the sales, and instead of you having to travel 40 weeks every single year, you can sit back at home because we're just gonna tape it one time and take it all over the world. And here is the original clip that we did. Now, you, now, you take a tomato, the weight of the knife alone cuts that tomato. Let me ask you something. How many knives do you have at home this sharp? You could drop the tomato on top. Pretty sharp, right? Do you know what one young lady said? <laughs> Can you cut them thin? I said, thin, one tomato will last you all week long. <laughs> I don't know, the crowd here is a little younger than normal, but how many have seen Arnold Morris before on television? Maybe, yeah, okay, great. Well, guess what? This went on to do over $500 million in sales. Let's give Arnold Morris a round of applause also, okay? You like that? All right. Um, now, we, we did it because we took it all around the world because it was, if, it, if it worked in the US and there's bars on the screen on Discovery Channel, I wonder if there's bars on the screen in England, in Africa, in Asia, and Latin America. So we opened up offices around the world. And this became a very powerful, very successful, big, big business. And so this is, now I'm talking about all the great stuff because I'm about ready to tell you what happened. Um, so we got, we were doing Arnold Morris and then Jack LaLanne and all these people we've had, I built this big staff and infrastructure. I said, wow, we're rolling, we're doing we actually had 500 million a year in sales. We were doing $10 million a week in sales. And it, it was just going like crazy. So um, I said to myself, we need our own media company. We need our own fulfillment center. We bought our own production studio. We had 80,000 square foot worth of fulfillment. And yep, we, were, we had all the celebrities from Billy Mays and the Kardashians and Frankie Avalon, George Foreman, 50 Cent, you name it. They came in, we did the deal, we made big success.